Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this Reactor workshop. Um, the Reactors, as you know, are community hubs where founders and developers come to meet and learn uh, from experts from Microsoft and from their partners and open source community. And it's also the home to the Microsoft for Startups program. With a diverse mix of hands-on workshops and community events, there is something for everyone. Check out our calendar of events on meetup.com and join our upcoming sessions. On uh, today's workshop, we are... Let me, before we begin, also uh, quickly um, introduce myself. Maybe I haven't met me yet. So, uh, my name is Hussam. I lead the Reactor in Abu Dhabi. And um, it's a pleasure being here with you. And, and on today's session, we're hosting uh, Chris Howard who is uh, gonna share with us um, more insights into um, uh, access reviews and entitlement management. Uh, so excessive uh, access rights can lead to audit findings and compromises as they indicate a lack of control over access. And um, it becomes more evident on uh, teams, let's say, where many organizations allow their users to find and invite guests uh, but rarely have an effective strategy on governance on uh, and managing uh, this removal. And in today's session, we will be looking more at Azure Active Directory and how we can clean and ensure only the guests that have access to the environment are in current and um, are as, as needed. Uh, Chris Howard, just a bit of uh, background. Um, he has 12 years of cloud e computing experience, currently building educational practices, and his areas of uh, focus are Microsoft Teams, Office 365, uh, entry-level Azure, and in his uh, spare time, he's very active in the Microsoft tech community, and he's a, he has a technical blog uh, on microsoft365pro.co.uk, which you can visit. I'm going to share the link with you in the chat. Uh, he's been uh, speaking and actively uh, contributing to the community uh, in Ignite and in, in many summits and local and uh, regional events as well. He's a co-creator of the Teams Nation and uh, also a member of the Microsoft Association of Practicing Architects. Uh, he comes with lots of experience and we're so excited to be having you here with us, uh, Chris. Uh, before we begin, a quick reminder about the code of conduct. Uh, we're coming all from different backgrounds, so let's be aware of uh, each other's and friendly and patient, we're all here to learn. So let's be welcoming and respectful, open to all viewpoint and questions and be understanding of the differences and considerate to others. That's in brief, uh, you know, the, the code of conduct. Uh, I don't wanna take longer in this introduction. I would love to hand over uh, this uh, presentation and, and to kick off the workshop of today to Chris. Chris, thank you for joining us today. Thank you ever so much. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It's been a little bit of a while since I've uh, spoken in the reactor. Actually, it's been about three months, and uh, I don't usually like to to leave it that long. So thanks ever so much for having me back. This session, uh, as has been introduced, is called Stale Guests: The Case for Access Reviews uh, and Entitlement Management. This is all about Microsoft Teams. This is all about managing guests with inside your environments, and it's really directed at the administrator of the Microsoft 365 tenant. Uh, my name is Chris Hoard. Um, as said, I'm a partner education lead at Vision here in the UK. I will talk a little bit more uh, about my kind of interest and, and what I do, I guess, towards the uh, the end of this session, because what I want is to, to get straight into the detail. The code of conduct has already been shown, but just to kind of double down on that, these events always run best when we uh, embrace everyone's views and their perspectives and their experiences and, and where they come from. This code of conduct I've uh, kind of taken from Microsoft Reactor and I've employed it into my talks elsewhere. And what I find is it just creates that, uh, that great environment for learning and, and having that dialogue. So 
As you can see down the bottom right hand side, be kind and uh, considerate to others because they're here to learn and uh, their viewpoints are equally valid. So thanks and let's get into the session. So what we can expect from it, we're going to break this down into three parts. Number one, we're going to look at what the issues are uh, with management approaches to guests with inside Microsoft Teams today. There's a number of strategies that organizations take. We're going to deconstruct them, find out what are the benefits and what are the costs for doing that. The second part, really the hands on part and the part where the demo is what and how. So what is entitlement management? What are access reviews and how do we apply them within Azure AD and to the teams within inside our environment. Part three, which is the close, is really the summary and moving beyond what we call the one to five guest ratio that we've had in Microsoft Teams for a long time. There's something new, there's something that we should all consider switching to because it's really going to facilitate access reviews and entitlement management, but I'll explain that in the session. When we take all three parts of that, the outcome, what we want to achieve today is really beginning to understand how access reviews and entitlement can help us to manage guests. It can be another tool in the kit bag uh, and can go beyond existing approaches. If you feel like you've done that after uh, this session, then we've achieved what we've set out to do. So a little bit about this session and who it's directed for is a level 300 session, so it's advanced um, content, so it will get into the granular. Um, it's really designed for the administrator as opposed to the, the user or the power user within inside the organization. Uh, and in terms of the scope, it's going to focus on Azure Active Directory as opposed to working a lot within Teams. So yes, it's about Teams, how we control guest access to Teams, but this is really done in Azure Active Directory. So that's where all the demos are going to be. In terms of the demos, it's between 40 to 50%. So, that, you know, quite a lot of this session will be actually kind of show and tell. But just a caveat, Microsoft Teams is rapidly changing. We, we know every single month there are changes. Um, Azure AD with new preview features changes as well. So this session, I always put a caveat on my team sessions when I do talks. They're going to be valid for four to six weeks, but things may change. We've got Microsoft Ignite that is going to be coming up in the fall, so we could see some new functionality there. So let's start out with the session then uh, and talk about these existing approaches uh, to managing guests within Microsoft Teams. And we're going to start out not with the approaches themselves, we're really discussing uh, the context. And that context is really within the success of Microsoft Teams. So we think when we think about Microsoft Teams and we think about the story of Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is four years old. Um, so it's an application that isn't very old. It's not been around for a decade or it's not been around for 15, 20 years like like Exchange, for example. And in that time, it's had meteoric growth. OK, that what we call a daily active user, the number of people that actually actively use Teams, they send a message, they use an application has gone up dramatically. As you can see here from the chart on the left hand side before COVID, OK, in July 2019, so when I was in Vegas at Microsoft Inspire, this was the number that was announced. This number was relevant, 13 million daily active users, because it was the first time that usage of Microsoft Teams had overtaken Slack, OK, which was considered to be its main competitor at the time. Now, when the news of COVID first started coming out of China, the number stood at about 20 million daily active users. So that's good growth. That's a kind of conservative, that's 7 million DAU growth within the space of about four to five months. And then you can see the numbers after this. It absolutely rockets up. So as COVID takes hold, as organizations and countries had to put mitigation in place, you can see that, it, that you know the usage actually exploded. So by March 2020, 44 million. By May, 75 million. And, and what's interesting is, is that during that period, in one week, Teams went up by 12 million daily active users within seven days. That's a, an absolutely amazing statistic and has continued to grow. So the, the, the kind of the last kind of formal figure um, should, you know, we heard of was in the earnings call a couple of weeks ago, which was 147 million daily active users. So that's that's gone up even since uh, April when it was 145. So that's meteoric growth. And during that time, Teams has had many accolades. 
twice Best in Show at Enterprise Connect, is constantly featured in Gartner as being the leader in UCAS and the leader in meetings. It's overtaken Slack a long time ago and it's rapidly closing in on Zoom. Now, the reason for this meteoric growth, I think that, you know, we've identified what is the uh, the main uh, driver, which has been remote working generally caused by COVID-19. For business continuity reasons, organizations needed to have its workers working remotely as opposed to being in the office and that move to remote work have necessitated applications such as Microsoft Teams. So that has been the main driver, but there are also others as well. The second is that there have been lots of innovations in Teams. Month upon month, we are seeing new features with Microsoft Teams being brought out far faster than other uh, services within the Microsoft 365 stack. So when we think of Exchange and, and SharePoint and we, we think of the Office apps themselves, the innovations for Teams are coming far faster and Microsoft is really piling its development weight behind that. Number three, it resonates and simplifies. I don't know whether, you know, kind of you work with organizations or you sell Microsoft Teams to them, but if you go into organizations and have a conversation um, or you're on a Teams call remote and you discuss about using Microsoft Teams, organizations are very receptive for, about this because with Teams, you can work, okay, with all of your other team members wherever you are on pretty much whatever device. It really simplifies things because we're bringing together our communication and collaboration workloads. We're bringing together chat and we're bringing together meetings and calling and we're bringing together apps too. Next, this is a strategic focus for Microsoft. If you've seen adverts on the TV about Microsoft, chances are it's going to be an advert on Microsoft Teams. Microsoft know that Microsoft Teams is the gateway to the rest of the Microsoft 365 applications. So when you're using Teams, you are using SharePoint, you are using OneDrive, for example, because you are storing all of your other files in it. When you're having a chat, that information is stored in Exchange Online. So Teams is very much a strategic focus, and we've heard it from Jeff Teeper before in the last few months. You know, he wants the number of users with Microsoft Teams to be equal to the number of users, okay, which are using Windows at this current in time. So when we think of uh, Teams being 147 million uh, DAU, it's 250 monthly active users. They want to get that up to a billion. 1.3 billion. That is the numbers where they're envisaging Microsoft Teams. And last but not least, okay, it's, it's growing because of this extensibility. We heard this concept Teams as a platform. Microsoft are developing their apps to be used within Microsoft Teams. And it is trying to build its ISV network and get other organizations when they're developing apps to develop them for Microsoft Teams. And the number of apps you can now use in Teams has, again, grown exponentially. About a year ago, it was about four, five hundred. If you look in the Teams admin center today, it's over a thousand. Now, all of this success, OK, all of this, OK, brings us to the issue of working with others. Now, when we work with others within Microsoft Teams, we generally do so in two ways. We have what we call federation, when we can work with people outside of our Teams environment who have their own Teams environment and we can chat to them and we can call them. But the second way that we can work with people outside of our Teams environment is by inviting them into that environment. And when we invite people into our tenant into our team's environment. That's what we call guests. We're inviting those guests to come and collaborate with us inside those teams. And that collaboration, you know, so for as has, has been there within Microsoft Teams pretty much since that, you know, the very start. So we've been able to invite people into our team's environments for for many years at this point. However, OK. Whilst it's great, that we can invite people inside as guests, inside our team's environments. If I'm going to put on my security and compliance hat, this does raise certain questions. You can see them down below. Number one, how do we know the right people have access to our data? OK, so when we're, you know, some when people 
with inside our organizations when users are inviting guests how do we know that the people that the guests that they've invited into their environments are the right people because in teams we're putting more and more of our sensitive information number two do we have an auditable record of who we added and who we removed? Again, putting on my security and compliance hat. Do we know when that guest was added to our environment? Do we know when they have left that environment? And can we tell this easily? Because, for example, if the wrong person is there, we needed to find out how long they have been inside that environment. Do we know this? Next, is the team being responsible for those who we've given access to? So when a user adds a guest, do we know if they remove that guest after they finish collaborating with them in that team? Because in my experience, they don't. They get added and then they're left there for all time. Last but not least, from an admin perspective, how do we know that our tenant isn't just cluttered with stale guests? So let's say we've got 400 guests, okay, with inside our team's environment across, you know, working and all our teams. How many of them are valid? How many of them need to be there? How many of them collaborated on a project months ago and have not accessed our tenants since? Because if that person, for example, was to get breached, if they had their credentials breached and, uh, uh, and the malicious attack had got into their environment through them, they'd have access to our environment where we could be storing our sensitive information. So all of this raises question marks and brings us on to how people manage guests with inside teams today. Well, real world experience from the uh, field kind of shows that people or organizations do so in a number of ways. Uh, and they normally have a number of strategies. If you were to turn around to an organization and say, how do you manage guests inside your environment today? The first strategy and the one that's most prevalent is that organizations take no action. They've just turned on guest access with inside Microsoft Teams. OK. Uh, and they've left it. They said, look, they've put productivity over security. They've just turned it on. And then any user with inside OK, their environment can invite guests to collaborate with them inside Teams. They're added at will. And uh, this is not just because they've just turned it on. The admins are unaware of access reviews. They're unaware of entitlement management. They're typically unaware of other options like sensitivity labels too. But also as well, some businesses, particularly small businesses, are just unwilling to pay or consider to have anything, you know, kind of any other service in order to be able to uh, manage guests. They said, look, those controls should just be what I pay for anyway. They should be built in. Now, the outcome of this strategy is, is there's a yes, you get frictionless collaboration as such. It's very easy to invite guests inside your environment, but there is an increased risk and, and chance of data leakage because you, you don't know who's coming into your environment. You can't track that. You're, you're not managing it whatsoever. So the second strategy that, that businesses often take is that they don't allow guests at all. So they go to the opposite extreme. So on the one hand, you have people that just turn it on and leave it on and don't monitor it and, and guests just keep building up inside their environment. On the other pole, the strategy has been that organizations don't allow guest access at all. So guest access with inside the Teams Admin Center is completely turned off. And so Teams becomes internal use only. This kind of strategy um, is very much based in a, a security and compliance mentality that is based on old on-premise thinking. So we're, we're going to keep everyone else outside of our organization out. And the only people we're going to allow are people with inside our organization. Now, you're not going to have any issues with guests because you don't allow them into your environment. But on the other hand, you're not going to get any collaboration anymore. You're not going to get any productivity. And, you know, th th this is a, a kind of uh, this ends up hurting you in the long run if you're an IT admin, because, yes, you don't allow people kind of guest access. But at the same time, you can't easily collaborate, invite these guests inside your environment. That is what most businesses need to do. And if users cannot do that, what tends to happen is, is it kind of promotes what we call shadow IT. They go off and do it anyway, but they do it in applications that you have got no control out of. How many times have we spoken to organizations and we've seen them using WhatsApp on their phone? 
because that's how they're going to work with people outside of your environment if you do not allow them to do this within Microsoft Teams. So for the Microsoft admin, OK, we need to allow guests, but we just need to uh, do it within a sensible way where we have those controls. Strategy three is a sporadic purge of Azure AD. So some of you who have come along to this session might do this yourself for your own organization. So how do we remove guests from the environment completely? Well, what we need to do is we need to jump into Azure AD and go and uh, and delete them. This is what we call an admin led removal. So you can go into Azure AD. Let me just jump into my actual demo environment because I want to make sure that uh, it continually refreshes. I'm just going to refresh. So here we are in Azure AD. If I come into Azure AD, OK, I can go to my users. And I can see that there are guests in here and I can simply go, for example, delete those guests and then hard delete those guests and then those guests are completely removed from my environment. But the problem with this is two points, really. OK, the first is it's often infrequent. OK, so admins have to put this as a scheduled task and this scheduled task is in all the other scheduled tasks that they have and all the other responsibilities. And in my own experience, OK, this is done sporadically when people remember to do it. OK, the downside is. The admin doesn't know who should needs to stay and who needs to remain. So they often have to go around to people and say, look, is, does this guest need access anymore? Does this this can take a long time? It can be a very frustrating process. So whilst this is ultimately managing guests, it's very um, haphazard. It's, it's not ideal for the admin. It's not ideal for the users and it's not ideal for the guests who may get accidentally deleted in the process. Last but not least, we have sensitivity labels. Now, sensitivity labels on Teams, I guess, came out about, I would say about a year ago at this point, but you can apply sensitivity labels to Teams, right? Now, the benefit of these sensitivity labels is by applying a sensitivity label to a team, you can go and block access on a specific team. In other words, when we turn on guest access or turn guest access off within the Teams admin center, that's like a master switch. It's either on or off. There is nothing in between. But if we have guest access on, we can apply sensitivity labels to Teams and block access to specific Teams. OK, so this goes beyond an all on or all off approach. Now, if you've got really sensitive data, we'll probably apply the sensitivity label to the team to make sure that no guests has access to it. However, OK, the problem with this is that you could still be working with guests on sensitive data. So this is a, a kind of again, this is an all on all off to specific teams. Rather than the specific tenant, so sensitivity labels get us us some ways. It's definitely an improvement on the whether the guest access is on or off, but there are still scenarios where we need to work with guests on sensitive data in particular teams. We can't just block them out of the team. So the conclusion to this, OK, we need more effective organizational control and we need to really take into account the, the following points. Number one, it, we need to take time and situational change into account. We need to understand that guests are only should be around in our side, our environment for a period of time. B, we need to generally move away admin tasks, OK, into the hands of the team owners. Why? Because team owners, as opposed to the admins, know who is supposed to be inside their team. The admin, think about if our organization's a thousand users. The admin can't know every guest in every team and understand if they're valid or not. That's just impractical. So the team owners are much closer to knowing who OK should be in that. Next, OK, we need automated actions. OK, I can't manually go and chase people to be able to tell me who is supposed to be in my environment as a guest or inside this particular team as a guest. This needs to be automated. It needs to be able to be easily done without infringing on people's flow of work. So access reviews and entitlement management, OK, are two solutions, OK, that we can think about implementing that takes into account these things. 
Now, the licensing requirement for these is Azure AD P2, but I'm going to explain that as I kind of work through it. So yes, it is uh, an additional charge for the service, but it's not as expensive as people think. And again, I will explain this. So what are access reviews? We're going to walk through about and create an access review in a moment, but just to define them, this is when user access or guest access, as we will show today, can be reviewed on a regular basis to make sure that the right people have continued access. And we can set this for groups and hence teams. We can set this for applications. We can even set this for roles. Now, who can set this up? You can set this up if you're a global admin or if you've got the user administration permissions. OK, so if I'm here inside my environment, just make sure, OK, the, the users who is going to be doing this and is going to be setting this up has the correct role okay within this so if let, they just take in uh, adam here okay i want to make sure that adam has the right role in order to be able to do this with inside my environment okay so remember global admin user admin or even if you are the owner of a security group that is now that's in preview today now who can do the role the review so the admin, you can assign others within your org, so you can assign the team owners to do these access reviews, or you can even assign guests to do it themselves and self-attest inside your environment. I've talked enough. Let's go down uh, and actually create this access review. So I have a team, OK, and here you can see I've created one exactly for doing this demonstration today. It's called the entitlement team. If I click on the three dots and I click on uh, the uh, manage team. You can see that this team, I'm the team owner, uh, and then I've got five people with inside my team. Three people are users with inside my own organization, so Adam, Ma, and Amanda, and Vesa and Adam are guests. So you can see we've got three internal members and two guests with inside my environment. Now I go into Azure Active Directory, okay, and select Azure Active Directory, and I go to Identity Governance. And here you get the options for entitlement management, access reviews, or privileged identity management. I want to create an access review for this particular team. I want to have an access review for all of the guests within that team, and I want to run this regularly. So I'm checking it every so often to say, shall these guests be allowed in this team or not? I go to create an access review. I then state what I want it for. So I'm going to say for teams and for groups, OK, and then I'm going to say for select teams or groups, I've got the option to do it for all or, you know, so all of the, uh, the 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 teams or all of the guest users across the environment or for the specific team. I'm going to select the specific team and it says which group and I select, OK, the group that's linked to the team. So entitlement. This is my team. Here you will see it in Azure AD. I click select. OK. Select the scope of the review. So do I want to do it for everyone or do I do want to do it for guest users only? In this example, I'm going to do it for guest users only. I select the review. I now move on to the next stage. Who does the review? Who's the person? I can select the group owner, OK, which the group owner is the, the owner. So for me, OK, I can select specific people. Users review their own access or managers of users. So I've got some options here, right? I'm just going to go selected users, OK? And I'm going to select myself. Now, in the review, when does that review period happen? How many days have I got to review who should be inside this environment or not? I'm going to state that as three days. The review recurrence, I'm going to say, I'm going to hold that on a monthly basis. It's going to start today. And it's going to end never. So for now, until the rest of the time that that team exists, I'm going to do an access review each and every uh, month for three days. That period is going to be open. And in that three days, I'm going to review those guests and whether they need access or not. Why do I set it at three days? Because, well, those days can be really, really busy and I could have a lot on and I might not just be able to do it within one particular day. I now click select. Now I go to the settings. Now, this is all about these settings. What happens based upon the decisions you make? Should you continue to give them access or should you deny that? OK, 
auto apply the results to the resource. OK. Basically. That's applied at the end of the review period, so I make my decision and then it's auto applied. If reviewers don't respond, so if that access review is open for three days and I take no action, I don't even do the review, I can set it so that it can take an automated reaction. And I'm going to say, if I don't respond, I'm going to I'm going to give them, I'm going to allow them to remain in that because it's probably unfair that they get removed if I don't do the access review. Action to apply on denied guest users. Well, I can set them to remove the membership from the resource, so remove them from the team, or I can even say to them to remove access from the whole tenant, so completely remove them from the whole of my organization's environment. I'm going to set it to just remove them from the team. OK, now. In advanced settings, justification required, so if I'm going to give them access still. I need a justification for doing so. Notifications and reminders are on. OK. What are the outcomes? The outcome is going to be emailed and then I'm going to be reminded throughout the course of that access review period that I have to do the reviews. I can also put additional content in the reviewer email if I've got kind of specific things to take into account during that review or other actions within a system elsewhere. I click review and create. OK. I give the review a name, so I'm going to call this entitlement access review. I'm going to give it a description and then I click create. OK. And you can see that the access review, OK, has now been created. And what will happen is, OK, is that it will say not started. If we refresh this, OK, within the next, I say, five or ten minutes, it will then have triggered and started because the entitlement starts today. So for the next three days, OK, this review is going to be open. So we moved through the review type. There's basically the scope of the review, the reviewers, who is doing the review. I set myself as the, you know, as the as the specific person, but you can set the team owners as shown. So whoever's in charge of that team can be responsible for making the decision over whether guests should be in that environment or not. We went through the settings. What happens during the view, the review? So what's the expected behavior? If I select approve, it's going to I'm going to need a justification, but they're going to remain. If I select remove at the end of the review period, they're going to be removed and they're going to be removed from the team but they're not going to be removed from the whole environment. I then created it. The prerequisites, OK, for being able to like kind of do a review, as it were, who's who, who is eligible to do a review? The P2 license doesn't have to be for everyone who gets reviewed and doesn't need to be for the guests. The P2 license, the Azure AD P2 license, just needs to be on the person who does the actual review. So in that case, because I'm the one doing the review, I have to have the P2 license. In terms of guests, they're covered under what's called the external identities monthly active users. Now that's an Azure functionality which we're going to discuss at the end of this session. This is going to be the thing that moves us away from this one to five guest ratio because one to five guest ratio, what we've had for years, has been extremely prohibitive because we could have even though we're a small organization, we we could want hundreds of guests with inside our environment. External identities in Azure now supports 50,000 guests using P2 functionality. OK, so one P2 license is needed for what I've just shown you, and that isn't very much an investment to be able to control guests inside the environment. Now, what happens, OK, now that we've actually created, OK, that access review. So if I kind of you can see, look, it's already turned to active, so it's there. I've got an email through, OK, saying action required. I need to go and now do the access review, OK? If I look inside the access review. You will see, OK, all the details about it, OK, and it will say that there are two users to review 
because with inside my team, the two guests are Adam and Vesa. OK. Now, where do I actually go to do the review? I go to myaccess.microsoft.com. OK, if I refresh this. You will see that I now. Have to go and do the access review. So here's Adam, here's Vesa, OK, and it will give us a recommendation. Adam's signed into my environment. It knows that that's a valid guest. So it's saying yes, approve it. OK, but because Vesa's not signed in uh, and worked inside my environment, deny. He's obviously not using the environment. Get rid of it. But if we click on Adam, for example, OK, we can either choose to accept the recommendation, approve it, deny it or don't know. OK, now the outcome of the don't know is typically OK to fall back on an accept action. You can set it in Azure AD otherwise, but I'm going to go here. I'm going to approve. I'm going to give my business justification. Adam is a great guy. I'm working with. On this project. And I'm going to submit. And then that's going to approve. And at the end of the review period, at the end of the three days, he is going to be set then to be approved for the next month until the next review. So some good things to know. OK, about this, you can change your decision within that review period. So within the three days, if something comes to light and he shouldn't have access, I can go back and set that to deny. OK, if we kind of work out something comes to light. OK, we can set an outcome when a reviewer doesn't decide by the end of the review. We did that. OK, so if I've not done uh, the review in that three days, it's going to auto accept for everyone. I can auto apply when creating the review. I can also set a deny action to block and delete automatically and remove from the tenant as a part from the group team. If this is the only team that the person kind of is with inside the environment. Then I can set OK it to just remove from the team. Uh, should I say from the from the whole tenant as opposed to the team? So we have got kind of um, uh, quite a bit of flexibility to play around OK with these access reviews and the kind of outcomes that we want to have inside our environment. Now, what happens if the guests are part of multiple teams? So we, let's say we've got a vendor or a partner that we work with and he's in that entitlement team. Let's say, for example, that he's in both of these teams. So he's in the entitlement team, he's in the modern work team. It wouldn't make much sense to remove them from the whole environment because if for example i deny him he's going to get removed from the whole environment and every team he could be working with projects with other people inside my organization so there's a couple of kind of things that you would do okay is that you would make sure that all your access reviews were at the team level and they were stated to only remove from the team itself never ever remove from the whole tenant Alternatively, there's a flip side about this. You could perform a self review at the tenant level. OK, in other words, you could instead of making people with inside your organization review, you can get the you the guests themselves to self attest. And to self manage themselves uh, and say whether they should keep having access to the environment. Or not. Of course, the downside to that is, is that you have to rely on the guest doing the review. But you can set it because you've seen how we can do it now. You can set the access review to say that if they are not taking it seriously, if they are not reviewing themselves every month, then it automatically removes them from the whole environment and they would need to apply to us to get access again at some point in the future. So that's access reviews. Now we under, kind of understand access reviews and as shown you can do them on a weekly basis. You can do them on a monthly basis. You can do them on a, a quarterly or even a yearly basis. This now leads us on to entitlement because access reviews are in part, uh, uh, part of what we call entitlement. Now access reviews is when we review on a regular basis. Entitlement, OK, is about packaging up. Our resources and giving them to people. So it's not just kind of reviewing about whether they should be a guest or not. It's actually giving them a packet package of resources 
So like, say, a team or multiple teams. And then giving them access to those particular resources and nothing else. OK, so when, you know, entitlement, we, we do not invite guests through this way within Teams anymore. So I'm back in my demo environment. We no longer start adding guests as members of Teams. What we do is we use entitlement to package up that access and give that package to users. And then we do an access review on top of that. Again, this works for group memberships, so Teams apps okay and it also applies to roles as well but we need to do a few more added actions we need to create what's called a catalog and from that catalog create a package and from that package assign it to the user so i'm going to go and show you that now who can actually do this the global admin or the user admin but we can delegate actions out so whoever creates the catalog whoever creates the package whoever does the access review the administrator does not need to do all of this himself okay so let's go and show you how to do that now with inside the environment so here i am in azure ad again i'm in azure active directory what i will do okay is go to identity of governance again and here you can see i can create in my access package but before that, I'm going to go to what's called a catalog. So here we have a general catalog, a built in catalog, and we can go and configure it in here. But chances are in our our environment, we're going to have all different kinds of packages. So we're going to have all different kinds of catalogs, too. So I'm going to create a new catalog. I'm going to call this entitlement after my after my team. I'm going to set that to enabled and enabled for external users. So this catalog is essentially a container for the access package that I'm going to create. The access package is going to hold the resources. I'm going to assign the access package to my users. So I created my catalog. I select it. OK, you will see access packages. I can create a new access package from here. So here's my access package. I can then go and start to create it from here or alternatively if I go to getting started I can create it through entitlement management so I'm going to do it here I'm going to call this package the entitlement team package it's entitled like and it's going to go into the entitlement catalog I'm going to click the resource roles so we can choose our, our, our groups and teams. We can choose our applications or we can choose our SharePoint sites. I'm just going to choose the team. So here's my team. Entitlement and click select. I'm not going to give it access to the underlying SharePoint site. So for anyone who gets granted, this access package is going to be set in the member role, which allows them to be able to access that resource, which is the team. I click next. For requests, who can access, you know, who can request access to this package? So who can we give this package to? Now, this is important because we, you know, if guests are already inside our environment, we're going to want to select this option. If guests are not inside our environment, we're going to want to select this option for users not in the directory. Or if we want to make sure that these are administrator led ads to the package. We then have this third option. So I'm going to create an access package that people can request outside of my organization. I'm going to select for users not in the directory. We have some choices here about which organizations outside of our directory. So I'm going to say all. That's going to need some approval. It's also going to need a justification for whoever applies for that package. Who's going to approve it? I'm going to choose a specific approver. So I'm going to be the one approved this time. And enable new requests and assignments. We turn that to on. OK, we click next. So this is really setting. We can also set questions that people who are going to ask for the package need to answer. I'm going to set an example question. Which project are you working on? Because this proves that somebody is legitimate.
you could choose a number of different formats, short text, multiple choice or long text. I'm going to have a short text for that. I'm going to have a second question. Which organization do you work for? So we are giving them and we're going to say that that's required. OK. That means that the people who are requesting the package. Can now actually OK answer the questions, prove themselves they are who they say they are, that they're legit, that they're not just some false kind of guest being added to the environment. We click next. And then, OK, how long that access package lasts for, how long you are giving people access to that resource. So in this case, how long are you giving those guests access to the team for? OK, you can set on a specific day, a number of days or never. So I'm going to set this, OK, for 90 days. So that's basically three months. I'm going to give them 90 days access to that team. And at the end, they're going to have to perform an access review. So they're going to have to kind of if they want continued access to that team. It's going to be 90 days, OK, and it's going to start today. The review frequency is going to be quarterly and the duration of that review, like the one last one, is going to be three days. I can have self review, a specific reviewer or a manager. OK, in this case, I am going to have OK, a specific reviewer again. I'm going to add reviewers and I'm the one that's going to do the access review. So at the end, OK, of every three months, that's when I come to be able to uh, review their access, their guest access to my team because I'm reviewing their package and if they should have that access package for the next three months. I click review and create. I then click create and I actually create my, my actual access package with inside my environment. And there you go. You can see that the access package is now created. I click on the access package. OK, now the, the two ways, OK, that you can actually provide this to the user, you can do it in two ways. If you've created if this is for somebody outside the organization, some of the organization says, look, I need access to be able to, to, to go to this package. You can give them a URL to go to. So I'm just going to go into a, a new browser session. I click on this, 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 uh, this URL. I click add. And so you can see I'm logging in. OK. Not as somebody inside the organization but somebody outside the organization. Those are my corp credentials, so I haven't got access to this other environment, but I can get access. Through this access package, right? So I want access to the access package. I request that access package and there you go. You can see I'm getting asked questions. So which project am I working on? I'm just going to call that project one. Which organizations do you work for? I'm going to put my org name in there. Business justification, current project. Multi million dollar deal. OK. I don't need to request it for a specific period. I just want the 90 days and then I have to start, you know, kind of tick uh, a terms and then I click submit. OK, so I have now requested to have access to that team in their environment. The access package has to be reviewed by the reviewer and granted to me. Once it's been granted to me, I will then have access to that specific team in the environment, not the SharePoint site, not any other teams, just that team in the environment because it's the access package that is defining the access to that team. OK. Now, in terms of setting up these access packages, it doesn't require a P2 license. OK, only if people in your org do the access review. So if you set up entitlement management and people self attest, if those guests do the review instead of people in your org. OK, then it's completely free. So that, that you know, that's, that's interesting, right? OK. Internal users who use the packages need P2 licenses, however. So if you're in, 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 you know, creating these access packages, not just for guests, but for people inside your org, the people inside your org need the P2 licenses. And again, guests in this scenario, OK, are billed by the external identity skew. 
it goes past the one to five guest ratio. So that's really cool. Now what happens, okay, I've told you about access in the access package. You can send the link, okay, to that person if they're outside of your Azure Active Directory. So if somebody's never been inside your environment, you would just send them the link. They would do what I just did and go and request the package to be a guest inside your environment. Or if the guest is already inside the environment, they would simply go to myaccess.microsoft.com. So let's take a look at that. OK, so again, myaccess.microsoft.com and then they would click on access packages and this would show the access package. If they did not, for whatever reason, see it, then they would click on this little organization here, pick the right organization, and then look at the access packages. OK. So there's two ways of really accessing that, depending upon who you've scoped the access package for. In terms of the access package itself, OK, guests, as I've shown you, can request access. You can, however, simply apply it to guests inside your environment as I showed through the creation process. And in terms of the approval, well, the email, OK, would have come through to my environment. Look, it's calling me to be able to approve or deny requests for Chris.Hord at Vision.Cloud. Chris, you know, Chris Hord is asking for the entitlement team package. He's saying he needs access to it for a multi-million dollar deal and he needs access to it for 90 days. I can then come back into Azure AD. OK, I can then look under requests. And then I'll see, look, there's the request from Chris Hoard as pending approval. I can click on that. I can see all the details. Then what I can do, OK, is click on the three little buttons. I can either decide to, to cancel the request, OK, or I can decide to approve or deny it based upon what I want to do. So I can do it within Azure AD. OK, I can also do it through myaccess.microsoft.com too. So if I've got approvals that are pending for people, I can do it there on the spot. So there we go. Chris has asked for it. I can click the button and then I can click approve, but I will need to provide a reason. So that's really good for auditing purposes. If I'm giving reasons as to why they need, you know, kind of access to the environment, you can cancel the approval after approving. You can change the resources in the access package. So if you say, oh, I need to give them access to two teams instead of one, I can go back and just modify the package in Azure AD. And you can search guests added through entitlement through the access review as well. So in Azure AD, if I come back here into Azure AD, I can search for the username through the requests. I can search for the user in my assignments. So if you've got like hundreds of people that or hundreds of guests that have got kind of access, you can easily pick them out just to see why they were given access, when they were given access and when that access expires. So just to sum up, OK, with access reviews and entitlement, number one. Access reviews and entitlement management take into account time and situational change. You can set guest access within the environment for a specific period of time, and you can review that on an ongoing basis. We can't do that when we just turn guest access on or off. We cannot do that when we sporadically purge people outside the environment. We cannot do that through sensitivity labels. With this, it can be put into the hands of the team owner. If we think about all those other strategies at the beginning, we couldn't do that. Turning it on or off is done by admins. Sporadically purging them out of Azure AD is done by admins. Sensitivity labels and applying them to teams to set up is done by admins. And when you create the team, OK, that is done by team owners. But. If I had my security and compliance hat on, you wouldn't necessarily want it to be like that because you don't want users suddenly being able to change the sensitivity label on the actual team itself. Last but not least, OK, these are automated actions, as you have seen. You can make it so that it's completely reliant on guests as opposed to the admin inside your environment. Now, if we translate all this to a real world scenario, it's probably more likely that you're going to have a mixture 
of both strategies in terms of sensitivity labels and access reviews. So for those teams where you have sensitive information that cannot be exposed out of the environment, you're probably going to have a sensitivity label that completely blocks guests from it. So that only users with inside that organization and within that team, you're going to probably have, you know, private channels within that. And then that is where the, uh, the data is going to be located with sensitivity labels on that data. That's probably the route that you're going to go. But where you have to work on sensitive information in teams where you can't just say yes or no, then access reviews and entitlement, okay, is a really, really good way. In those teams, you can say, look, have people for a month, or have people for two or three, depending upon how you create your access packages through entitlement management, or if even you just simply do an access review every month to say, should those people be there? Now, what I've shown you today is all about access reviews and entitlement management about guests, but you can use it for internal users too. You can use it for uh, apps and SharePoint access in addition to team access. But guess what? If you have a P2 license, you can also use a P2 license for identity protection and privileged identity management. So these are, you know, these are two, you know, kind of there's a lot more added inside that license than simply just entitlement and access reviews. And this alone, now you've seen it, is valuable enough. Now, the last point about moving beyond this one to five guest ratio for, for a long time, I've talked about this both in terms of the access reviews and the entitlement management. What does this mean? Well, this is about the limits of guests that we can have inside our environment. OK, so for a long time, in terms of how long Teams has been created for for four years, the ratio of guests to users within to licensed users within inside the environment is one to five. So if I have 20 people and they're licensed with a Microsoft 365 license, I would be allowed to basically have 100 guests with inside my environment. That is very restrictive, OK, uh, and we want to kind of really go beyond that. How do we do that? Well, what it, we do is we use something called the external identities uh, monthly active user SKU. That's a functionality, OK, with inside Azure, OK? So if, for example, I'm here inside my Azure environment, all I'll do is I'll go to instead of aad.portal, I'll just go to portal dot uh, dot azure dot com that will take me into azure now with inside azure okay okay we you know we can put in external identities and we get taken there okay it's within azure active directory and what we can do is we can link that to our azure subscription that is what we need to do in order to be able to enable this now why do we need to enable it to our Azure subscription is because if we go beyond 50,000 uh, monthly active use, look on active usage of guests, we will start being charged for it. But how many organizations actually have more than that guest users inside our environment? We, we're talking in the hundreds, not going above, you know, 50,000 guest users with inside the environment. So we want to transition from the one to five guest ratio to getting on to this external identities uh, as soon as we can possibly can. Having that, that kind of 50,000 users is free, by the way. So you'll just be linking an Azure subscription. You, you know, you won't actually, you can have an empty Azure subscription, but in linking that subscription lights up external identities MAU. And guess what? That has means or it means that guests can use all p2 functionality inside your environment for free right so you think about this for a second we can so send to to chris uh, yeah. just to be cautious more of the time uh would like to encourage everyone who's still here on uh, the session to send us their questions and um maybe we can cover that uh in a bit uh, the session is recorded and it will be available on YouTube um, in case you um, uh, had to drop or anything, uh, then you will be able to catch it on YouTube. But feel free to send us as uh, many questions as uh, you wish. Uh, we will be uh, covering that very soon. Absolutely. 
Um, and just kind of that was literally uh, the last point is uh, in moving to the external identities to support the use of access reviews uh, and entitlement because essentially you can set it up and if you self attest with the guests, okay, you don't need to add your license into your external users. So returning to the outcome, we've discussed the issues that we have with managing and controlling uh, guest access due to current strategies. We've looked at both what access reviews and entitlement management are. We've looked at the definitions. We've looked at how we can apply them in Azure AD to get to, you know, to review access for guests within Teams, but also to manage access to those teams because access reviews can then also be uh, within those access packages. Last but not least, we uh, looked at the external identities and how that can support access reviews and entitlement management. I hope you begin to understand about access reviews and entitlement management and how that can help you manage guests. You'll probably use it in the context alongside other strategies like sensitivity labels, but it's another kit kind of tool in the tool bag for you to be able to use. This session got real granular. It was a 300 advanced session. We were going very much into the specifics and of course, based upon your existing knowledge of uh, Teams and, and Azure Active Directory. We spent most of it in AAD. We tried to get in as much demo as possible as said with that caveat, four to six weeks. So I want to thank you. It's been ever so much of a pleasure. We started at 10 past, so uh, it, you know, it kind of uh, was roughly about the kind of the right time. Here's all my contact details. Here's what's up next for me. Uh, and we've got a couple of minutes of questions before we uh, we finish off. It's been ever so much of a privilege to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Howard, for uh, Chris, uh, Howard, for being uh, here with us and sharing your experience with our community. Uh, we got a question from Adam uh, about the one to five ratio. And um, maybe after that, you can um, uh, guide us through what resources or next steps that can be taken to learn more about this topic. Yeah, absolutely. So all the things that that, that basically um, kind of I've discussed here should be available today on docs.com. OK, I'll be happy to throw in a couple of, you know, kind of other links into the chat. OK, uh, in the, the I use, as it were, to, to kind of put this session together in terms of the next steps. OK, I, I would say the external identities skew in Azure is really important to break out of the one to five ratio. Then, of course, to kind of review um, the licensing, as it were, for entitlement management. You will find is, is that the, the license, the license, the, the people that have to be licensed are the people that do the access reviews in themselves. Uh, and that's a misconception because what, what a lot of people say is, is that, that all of these guests have to have their P2 license as well, and the answer is no. So in that scenario of managing, you know, the access reviews for guests inside your environment, only the reviewer, if that reviewer is inside your organization. If you're doing access reviews and entitlement management for people inside your organization, so for users, that becomes, you know, kind of a different story because users do have to be licensed. OK, in order to to be subject to um, those access packages. So just to be aware of, of, of that. OK, so the next steps is the external identities uh, and then start to, you know, and and start small, apply it to a single team, a SharePoint site, an application. OK, don't think you have to have the plan for your whole organization. And indeed, most organizations I work with only have it for part of their teams, not all of the teams inside their environment. Awesome. I see some questions maybe coming in. I think I would also like to add to that the Reactor YouTube channel. We have uh, been discussing um, some of uh, the topics around this uh, as well, uh, which you can find on demand in the playlist section. I'm going to share with the members today in the chat the link to access these videos. Also, you can check these resources to continue learning. Um, and if you haven't yet, uh, please check in. Uh, there is also a learn module which is relevant to today's uh, session. That is also a very great resource for you to continue the journey uh, and learning about this topic. Perfect. 
not sure um, if there are any other questions. Um, um, if there is anyone that prefers also to go on mute, please mention that in the chat. And um, I can enable that feature for you and then we can uh, listen to your questions and address them before we end this uh, session. All right, Adam says it's a great session. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Hope uh, hope everyone uh, enjoyed it. Uh, like I say, it's an advanced session, so it's uh, it's, it's it's it is very much for the prop for the people that were here uh, for their, <laughs> their for their roles. Um, I just hope they got a lot from it. I, I mean, I've started using this over the past, um, I would say, half a year, probably, probably just before Christmas last year, and it's worked out really well for my organisation, particularly when it's used in the context of specific teams. It, it gives us very much more granular control. As a team owner, I do not add guests, you know, through the actual team anymore. It's all through the package. In that way, everything is completely auditable. Uh, and it shows that I'm taking kind of the responsibility with inside my own organization and taking uh, security and compliance seriously. All right, there are no more questions. Thanks. Thanks again, Chris, for uh, coming here to the Reactor and for sharing your experience with our community on today's workshops and looking forward to have you in the future. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. The session is recorded and it, it will be available very soon on our YouTube channel for you to review on demand. Uh, make sure that uh, you also send us your feedback on the Reactor survey and use the event ID associated with today's workshop. This helps us uh, learn more about the topics you would love to see at the Reactor, and then we can also include them in the future planning. Thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of the day. Goodbye. Thank you.